Okay, so if you have a basic understanding of logarithms, well, this should be a very easy problem for you to solve. So what we have here is an equation, and the equation is ln x plus 3 is equal to 2 times ln 4. All right, so as I indicated, you need to know a thing or two about logarithms, and typically this is a topic that is taught in courses like Algebra 2, College Algebra, uh, some sort of second year algebra course, certainly uh, courses like pre-calculus. So if you have not yet reached this level of math, well, you probably haven't uh, learned how to solve logarithmic equations because that is the topic that we're discussing. But stick with me anyways for a few minutes because I think you'll be able to understand uh, this stuff. This is not that difficult. But if you have the answer to this equation, by the way, I'm going to really encourage you not to use a calculator. So try not to use a calculator. But if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through all the steps that we need to take to solve this equation. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you find this content interesting, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at this equation one more time. Pretty straightforward. We have ln x plus 3 is equal to 2 ln 4. Now, if you've never uh, heard of ln, if you have a calculator handy, specifically a scientific calculator, there's two buttons on your calculator. One is LOG and the other one is LN. Okay, so what we're talking about is this function right here, but both of these functions have to deal with logarithms, right? This is a huge topic in algebra, but uh, let's go ahead and take a look at the answer to this equation. The correct answer is X is equal to 13. All right, now, if you got this right, that is fantastic. I have to give you a nice little happy face in A+, plus, a 100%, because clearly you know a thing or two about logarithmic equations because you were able to solve this equation right here, and hopefully you were able to do this without the aid of a calculator. All right, now, some of you out there might be kind of like totally confused. You're like, I don't even know what you're talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man. Well, I'm going to give you a little bit of an explanation about what a logarithm is. Matter of fact, let's do this real quick right now so the rest of this video makes some sense to, uh, to those of you that have not yet studied logs or completely forgot this stuff. All right, so super fast. Basically, let's take an, uh, an example like 2 to the third power. So what does 2 to the, th uh, two the third power means? Or means? It means 2 times 2 times 2, right, which, of course, is 8. So 2 to the third power is equal to 8. Now 2, okay, and 3 make up this entire power. The 2 part is what we call the base, and the 3 part up here is the exponent. And then, of course, the answer is 8. So uh, when we have a power, 2 to the third power, we have this base of 2 and this exponent of 3, and when we take 2 to the third power, the answer is 8. So I want you to remember these uh, letters here, B, E, and A, because I'm going to give you something that's going to sound a little bit crazy. So I want you to remember this, log bacon, okay, you're like, what are you talking about? Bacon and eggs, log bacon and eggs. I'm kind of trying to make this color-coded here. So a logarithm, if you can remember bacon and eggs, well, you'll remember a log. So we have B, A, E. Well, the B, A, and E here refer to the base, answer, and exponent. So another way we can write a power expression is by using a logarithm. So let's go ahead and just write this 2 to the third power is equal to 8 this way. So what is the base here? Well, the base is 2. Okay, so we put a little 2 down there. What is the answer? The answer is 8. And what is the exponent? The exponent is 3. Okay, so log base 2, 8 is equal to 3. So on your calculator, if you uh, actually have to do what they call change of base formula, but log base 2 of 8, uh, the answer there is 3. But what we can do is write log expressions as power expressions and vice versa. All right, so if you understand uh, what I just told you here, this bacon and eggs business, uh, then you should be able to understand the rest of this problem. 
Okay, so let's go and get into this right now. Uh, if you need additional help with logarithms, because there is a lot of uh, stuff that you need to know that I'm not going to cover in this video, I'll give you some specific suggestions on how you can improve in any of these topics. Okay, so let's take a look at this uh, problem. Uh, the big thing that we want to notice here is this LN. So what does LN mean? Well, LN means log base E. Okay, now over here, uh, we just had a situation or an example. We have log base 2. Now, ln is something called log base e. Now, what is e? Well, e is what we call the natural base e. Matter of fact, it's an actual number. Okay, it's kind of like pi, where pi is approximately 3.14, on and on and on. This is an irrational number. So pi, probably one of the most important numbers in mathematics. And right up there with pi in terms of importance is the natural base e. Now, this number, matter of fact, I'm a little bit remiss. I probably should have wrote this out. I want to say it's around 2.718. A lot of you out there can um, correct me uh, if I'm wrong, but I think I'm pretty close here. But this is the approximate value of e. Okay, So it's a number. So log base e, we're not going to write this entire number. Uh, we're going to uh, use e to have that representation. So when we have a logarithm base e, well, it's this symbol here, okay, the, a natural logarithm. And this is a big, big deal. Matter of fact, on your calculator, it's such a big deal that they give it its own little separate button, okay? All right, now let's go and take a look at a couple other examples of logarithms. So if you have LOG by itself, like which, of course, we have on our calculator, what does that mean? Well, that is the common log or log base 10. So when we have log base 10, we don't go log base 10. We don't write that 10. All we do is write LOG. So in math, when you see LOG by itself, that implies log base 10. Again, that's called the common logarithm. And then, of course, we can have all other types of logarithms at other bases, like log base 2, like we have over here, uh, up here. Okay, so just a quick kind of uh, re, uh, review of logarithms, natural logarithms, etc. And for those of you out there that never learned this stuff, this is, you know, yes, it's more complex, but you can learn uh, more adva advanced and complex math. You know, it's just really one little tiny lesson and understanding at a time. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put this together here. So now that we know that LN really means log base E, how do we uh, approach this problem? Well, do we do the following? Okay, well, we have LN times X plus 3 is equal to 2 times LN4. So should we maybe replace these LN with log base E? Well, no, we don't want to uh, think of, of uh, we, don't, we don't want to approach the problem this way. Okay, you can think of it this way. This is a good way to kind of conceptualize what's going on, but this is what we don't want to do. Now, there are times where you actually have to think of ln as log base e specifically to do a calculation, but uh, really what we want to do here is figure out this part of the problem. Okay, this part of the problem we need to clean up and in order to kind of... Uh, improve this situation in the problem, we need to understand a property of logarithms. Now, again, there's a lot that you're going to learn when you study logarithms, but one of the things that you uh, learn is a particular property. Matter of fact, there's about five or so, if my memory serves me correct, but one particular property, let me just kind of write it right here. If you have log, uh, let's say we have log x to the third power. So if I have uh, log x to the third power, we have a property which is basically a rule that says you can take the exponent and plop it right in front of the log. So we can write it this way, log x to the third power. is uh, This is the same thing as writing three times log x. Okay, so three times log x, we can just drop the exponent down in front of the log. Now, uh, we could do the reverse of this. If I have three log x, I'm going to be like, hey, you know what, I'm going to put that three right back up there to write this as log um, x to the third power. Okay, so this again, this is a property of logarithms, and this is going to come in super handy in this expression right here, because 2 ln 4 is what? Well, this is an exponent, and I can kind of put it back up here uh, where it kind of dropped down, right? So I can just use that property to put this exponent of 2 on top of this 4. So really, uh, 2 ln 4 is the same thing as ln 4 squared. All right, now this is going to be really helpful for us because uh, 4 squared, of course, is 16. All right, at this point, uh, hopefully all of you out there are starting to kind of see where this is going. Now, if you haven't, 
figure this out, let me go ahead and give you a big clue. All right, so ln of this thing right here is equal to ln of 16. So let's just think about this. Let me erase this here for a second. We have the ln of some mystery thing, and we know that it's equal to ln of 16. So what must this be? Okay, well, if, if we're saying that this thing is equal to this thing, the ln of something is equal to ln of 16. Well, doesn't this have to be 16 as well? ln of 16 is equal to ln of 16. Uh, indeed, that is uh, true, right? So therefore, this x plus 3 must be what? Well, it must be a 16. And uh, hopefully you're going to see, oh, wow, this is super easy to solve. All right, so ln of x plus 3 is equal to ln of 16. So 16 and x plus 3 must be the same. So we can equate these and, uh, two expressions, right, or this uh, 16 with this x plus 3 and solve for x, which, of course, is super easy. So let's go ahead and do that. But before we finish this problem up, uh, maybe you can just hit that subscribe button real quick. I definitely need your support. Now, you know, although I've been on YouTube for 10 plus years, you know, I am going to stay on YouTube as long as I possibly can. And, uh, you know, my whole passion is to teach as much math as I possibly, you know, you know, can produce. And, you know, making a video like this takes some time. I got to think of a topic that might be interesting or, um, you know, uh, something that particularly where I, uh, the kind of the, the way I make my videos, let me say this, is I try to, you know, um, cover a wide range of topics from basic math to advanced math. But in particular, I try to, um, clear up confusion about concepts that a lot of students struggle with, like logarithms, for example, or, you know, matrices or trigonometry, whatever the case is, because oftentimes when students kind of see, oh, I understand that concept, then they, you know, they get some confidence and then they can build momentum. But each video of mine, you know, I really try to, you know, deliver some value and, you know, help whoever's on the other end of, you know, the video. So if you're getting some value from this, you're like, you know, all right, okay, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I get it, I get it. You know, well, just hit that subscribe button because it helps me help other people like yourself. And if you're going to do that, hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. Okay, so let's go ahead and finish this problem up because uh, it's really not that much uh, work to do here, right? So ln of x plus 3 is equal to ln 16. Well, x plus 3 must be equal to 16. So all we have to do is solve x plus 3 is equal to 16, which, of course, is a super simple equation to solve. So x plus 3 is equal to 16. All I have to do is subtract 3 from both sides, and you get x is equal to 13. All right, now, obviously, I could have solved this uh, equation in, you know, 15 seconds, but the whole point of this video is not to say, hey, look at me. I'm going to solve this real fast without a calculator. It's not about me being able to do this problem. It's about explaining, you know, big picture concepts about logarithms or reinforcing these things. Because even if you learn this stuff, you know, well, we tend to forget things if you haven't been around math. You know, a lot of you out there, you know, learned this many years ago. But, you know, it's just like riding a bike. You have to kind of brush off, you know, those old skills and start doing problems again. And, uh, you know, it's not a bad idea to review things from time to time. But uh, if you're at this level of math, let me give you a couple specific uh, uh, suggestions how to learn logarithms or improve in advanced mathematics. So a couple courses you want to check out, uh, two courses. Uh, you'll find the links of these courses in the description, my Algebra 2 course and my Pre-Calculus course. All right? So obviously Pre-Calculus is more advanced than Algebra 2. But in both of those courses, I teach about logarithms. Now, if you're not a math student, but you're like, boy, I did this way back in 1968, or maybe you did this in 1977, or maybe 1985, or 1992, whatever the case is, you get the point. But uh, if you want to kind of rebuild your math skills, well, the course for you is my Math Skills Rebuilder course. In that course, I start from basic math. I get into algebra, geometry, even some trigonometry and uh, even some basic probability and statistics. And I don't think, actually I should know this, but off the top of my head, but I don't think I hit logarithms in that course. But this is a good, well-rounded course, kind of strengthen your overall math skills, and then you can get into more interesting, interesting things like Algebra 2 and Pre-Calculus. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time, and have a great day.